Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's get into the Word of God. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 20. And we're going to read verses 1 through 7. Genesis, chapter 20, verses 1 through 7, as we continue our series on Bible characters and looking at the person of Abraham. Genesis 20, starting with verse number 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 7. Uh, Starting with verse 1, the Bible says, And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelled and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur, uh, Kadesh, Kadesh, however you pronounce that, Kadesh and Shur, and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. Now, if this sounds familiar to you, it's because Abraham has done this before. All right, uh, It was with Pharaoh the first time in Egypt. He, he lied to Pharaoh and said, this is my sister, instead of admitting that she was his wife. And uh, the reason why he does that is because she's very beautiful and she's afraid if somebody is, is coveting his wife that they may kill him in order to take her to be their wife. And so it really is a selfish motive. He's looking out for himself. He's not really, he's not really looking out for Sarah. Uh, you know, it's... it's um, it's pretty bad business. And uh, and this is the second time he's doing it now. Uh, and so sure enough, you know, she catches the the eye of uh, this man, uh, Abimelech, and um, he takes her to be his wife because he's thinking she's a single gal. Verse three, and God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, behold, thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, wilt thou also, uh, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself, said he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I not to, uh, therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, no. Thou know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Wow, this is uh, you know, probably one of the most amazing things about this is God's protection of Abraham, you know, even even when he messes up, you know, and he he lied, uh, he lied to uh, Abimelech, he uh, you know, absolutely should not have deceived him. He acted in fear, you know, rather than than trusting in God. And uh, nevertheless, because Abraham walked so closely with God and in, in fact was called the friend of God uh, and, you know, is a prophet of God and a friend of God, that God protected him anyway. And God went to Abimelech himself to warn Abimelech, hey, don't you dare touch her. She's a married woman. And, and, and Abimelech rightfully was like, whoa, 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 God, I didn't, I didn't know that. Uh, you know, they both, they both lied to me. I, did, I had no idea. And, and God, of course, acknowledged that and said, I know, I know. That's why I, I, I kept you from sinning against me, God said. I, I protected you from doing that, um, you know, because Abimelech had not touched her yet, you know, had not taken her to be his wife yet. Uh, and so God was protecting all parties involved, protecting Abraham and protecting Abimelech. But God was sure to, to show Abimelech how special Abraham was, that he is a prophet of God and God was there to protect him. And don't you dare touch his wife, Abimelech. Okay. This, you know, for our personal lives, like how, how can we apply this part of Abraham's life to our own life, Right. Listen, according to the Bible, if you are saved and born again, you are a child of God, okay? The Bible calls you a saint. The saints of, you know, in the New Testament, the saints 
are those who are saved, born again through the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, If you are born again, you are a saint. That does not mean you are perfect. I know there are religions out there who, who claim that a saint is a Christian who, who is like above all Christians and, and does all these, you know, amazing things and, and, and miraculous things and, and whatever, you know, all kinds of uh, wacky definitions here. But the biblical definition of a saint is simply somebody who is saved. If you are saved, you are a saint of God. All of your sins are forgiven. And, and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and you are a child of God. You have been given the power to be called the sons of God. Okay, we are the sons of God if we are saved. And we've been made kings and priests. All right, so all kinds of privileges come with being saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, and so with that being said, you are special to God. And, and even when we mess up, which we will, because we, we are fallible creatures, you know, we, we are sinful creatures still, as long as we are still in this flesh that, that we have not uh, died the first death yet, still had not, uh, you know, reached that, that first appointment with death as appointed unto man wants to die, you know, uh, we are going to mess up again in this flesh. It's a constant battle, just like Paul described, a constant fight, you know, with our flesh. And, and, and absolutely, uh, there is no way, I, it is not a biblical doctrine to, to, to reach what, what uh, many um, call sinless perfection. Uh, you know, as long as you are in this flesh, you're going to have to deal with sin. You're going to have to deal with a, a, a sinful flesh that is constantly against you <laughs> and against uh, the Spirit of God. Okay, it's a daily battle. Okay, his spirit versus our flesh, daily. Okay, but even with all that being said, you are a saint of God, a king, a son, and a priest. I mean, all of those things do mean something. And God is looking out for you. God is protecting you. There are, you know, this dream that Abimelech had, when, when, when God was having this conversation with Abimelech and warning him, hey, watch out, Abimelech, don't you touch that man's wife. Abraham had, Abraham had no clue. He had no idea that God was having this conversation with Abimelech. Abraham had no idea that at that very moment, God was protecting Abraham and Sarah Okay, from, from Abimelech. Despite this whole thing being Abraham's fault. All right? Uh, Abraham had no idea. Let me tell you, we have no clue at the many, many moments that God is protecting us all right, and looking out for us. So don't you dare ever, ever allow any such words to come out of your mouth as, God, do you still remember? Where are you, God? Why have you forgotten me? He hasn't. Okay? You just have no idea. He is actively out there. All things work together for good to them that love God. Okay? And just... Just the very fact that you are a child of God, He is actively working in your life. Don't let your emotions lie to you and tell you otherwise. Trust the Bible. This this is such a great example of that, of God working in the life of somebody that, that, that He loves. And let me tell you, God loves you. I'm out of time. Thank you so much for joining me today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.